Welcome into the In the Money podcast for Saturday, September 1st at Saratoga, closing weekend at the spa. Tom Leach along with Jim Goodman, Keeneland's Director of Wagering Development. It's an all-stakes pick four that we'll take a look at, and we'll just take the stakes races in order. There's a couple of grade ones in here. It starts in the ninth with the grade three Saranac on the turf, mile and an eighth for three-year-olds. I think the weather's supposed to be good this weekend. They had some midweek rain, so it's a little moisture in the turf course, perhaps. It had uh, gotten pretty firm, and uh, speed had been doing well uh, until this week. So uh, I ended up going on uh, Maraud, Jim, in here, because he had run well on uh, turf courses with some give in them, like the one at Churchill on on Derby. And he had uh, a big race there at Saratoga four weeks ago, has a couple of good works since. So it's not a real strong opinion, but I ended up on Maraud in here. Probably up the ante was the second choice, but I'm going to go uh, fairly deep when we get to the pick four. How about you in the Saranac? Uh, I like those two. I like two others as well, though. Uh, up the ante is my choice pick because he ran so well at Belmont, but he had a big bump in his buyer from 83 to 95. But that was on 4th of July, so they uh, Christophe Clement is one of the best trainers in the world for turf, and He's given this horse uh, some time off. You don't like to see a horse come back from that big bounce, uh, you know, three weeks later. But there's plenty of time for him to recover. Very impressive. Beat Raging Bull by three and a half that day. And Raging Bull is, is very tough for Chad Brown. And that's the other one I would use in, in uh, conjunction with your horses. Um, I'd use Raging Bull, uh, Maraud, Up the Ante, and Therapist, the seven, and the other Christophe Clement. You never want to let the other one beat you. And this horse ran at Saratoga on a, on a good course, and I was looking at the same thing you are in case there is a little bit given drown. Uh, got a 92 buyer and a New York uh, bred stakes. Um, takes on open stakes company here, so moving up a little bit. But I think that uh, he may be good enough for Christoph and Johnny Velasquez. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go deeper in the pick four here, but up the ante is my pick in the Saranac. Take us to the 10th race, the first of the two grade ones. It's the spin away for two-year-old fillies, and they stretch out to seven furlongs. Yeah, this one's always tough. I mean, you're looking at Phillies that, that some of them are only making their second start, and uh, they, they haven't been seven furlongs before. Uh, a couple of them have, and that's one of the reasons that I that I picked, uh, especially the six-horse, Sipican Harbor, for uh, Gary Contessa. But uh, I'm going to go a little bit deeper here, too. I'm going to save my, my single bullets for the end of the pick four. Uh, Catherine the Great, the four horses, the pick for me for Cassie and Ortiz, had a big win in the Schuylerville on opening day with a wire-to-wire score in 109-4. and four. Uh, Bringing her back in, uh, you know, six weeks is, is, is a good time for her to recover from that. And she's very lightly raced, as, as all these horses are, but she, she did get that graded win off of Maiden win, so uh, that's very impressive to me. I'm going to also use Nana Madeline for Todd Pletcher, Sipican Harbor, as I mentioned, for Gary Contessa. Chasing yesterday, the seven horse, you got to throw her in there for Bob Baffert, shipping her all the way across the country from Del Mar. Very impressive and amazing special weight. She was no uh, secret. She went off at 3-10 to 10 that day. So another Bob Baffert two-year-old. That's amazing. And Restless Rider for Kenny McPeak, uh, coming out of the Churchill races, won the debutante by 11, um, uh, 11 and a quarter. But the, the buyer came back light for that kind of race. Um, I, I don't know if that's a – she ran 110-3. and three. Maybe that track was tiring that day, but she was very visually impressive. She's two for two, and I think she's got a big shot here with P.J. Hernandez riding. So I'm going to go a little deep. Uh, Catherine the Great is my win pick in here, but I would also throw Chasing Yesterday in any exactus. I know from listening to some interviews that Kenny McPeak is really high on Restless Rider. Uh, he thinks she's one of the best ones he's had in a while. But I ended up on Chasing Yesterday. Baffert's so strong when he ships into Saratoga. This horse got an 86 buyer in the debut and has two six furlong works, which I like for the stretch out to seven furlongs. So I'm just going to use those two when it comes to the pick four. Chasing yesterday is going to be the win pick, uh, Restless Rider. Um, Catherine the Great certainly merits a, a lot of respect, too. I think Reflect, you could uh, take a look at coming in for the DeSormo brothers. Uh, they usually get a little better, his two-year-olds, as they get to longer distances. And I think that one could, could be a good one to hit the board. I don't know about winning, but to, to run second or third at maybe a nice price. Keep an eye on the 10, Reflect. But... Chasing yesterday is going to be my win pick over a restless rider. The 11th is the grade one Woodward. Three-year-olds and up at a mile and an eighth. A uh, full field in here. And I did not have a strong opinion. I ended up landing on Sunny Ridge. 
not wild about the 12 post, but I like that a, a Rad Ortiz stays uh, on the mount. And I like that 102 buyer last time, and Jason Service has, has gotten hotter up at Saratoga in the second half of the meet. Um, Gunavera uh, is the one I started to go to. Uh, he's run well at Saratoga before and had just a, a really easy uh, prep, so don't, I don't think you pay any attention to the speed figure in that. Uh, he'll, he'll run much better than that. Um, and then Seeking the Soul, uh, lost at Indiana Downs, but I remember we, we talked about that race and we both thought he, he might be vulnerable there because he was looking for just prepping for something bigger and this is it. Um, and I think his best race puts him right there in the mix for Dallas Stewart. And the other one I would maybe consider is Yoshida, just out of respect for Bill Mott. Um, this horse is very talented on the turf, got to prove it on the dirt, but um, something close to that uh, buyer figure he posted in the uh, Turf Classic Derby weekend, if he could done like that on the dirt, he'd be in the mix here. But Sunny Ridge is the pick for me over Gunnivere and Seeking the Soul. I think those three, uh, one of those three probably gets the money from me. How about you in the Woodward? This one was the closest I had to a single. And I think Gunnivere just uh, on class alone has to be the pick here. I think all the horses that you mentioned, along with a couple that I'm going to mention, um, they've all, except for Seeking the Soul, who has uh, won a grade one, this this is not a grade one field to me. It feels more like a grade two. you got some horses trying to do something for the first time, like Rashida. There's no way I would take him in a grade one uh, coming off the turf. But, you know, I was wrong last week about Catholic Boy, so I could be wrong again. Um, Gunna Bear is my pick here, and it, it's a fairly substantial pick. I think if he runs back to to the Travers, he ran last year three and a quarter behind West Coast with a 104 buyer. I think he wins this, and he, and he ran even better in the Breeders' Cup Classic. There's no gun runner in here, so he doesn't have to worry about that. So I think Gunavera is set up perfectly for this race. But uh, if you want a price, I think Discreet Lover is going to be a sleeper here for Manny Franco. Uh, that Whitney was really good. Ran four behind Diversify. Um, it was competitive, closed ground in, in the stretch, and uh, I think he might he might come back with a with a better effort here. His second one at Saratoga, so. I think Discreet Lover's got a chance to get the money. And then a real long shot. I think Term of Art is getting better for Brad Cox. Uh, again, this horse is not really a great one. He tried some great ones last year, uh, didn't do very well, and couldn't win the West Virginia Governor's uh, Stake on Mount, on uh, West Virginia Derby Day. But that was getting him ready for this race. So I think Term of Art, at probably 25 or 30 to 1, has a chance to get the money. Going to vary is certainly my win pick here, though, nine horse. Twelfth race is the grade two Glen Falls, and they go long on the turf, a mile and three-eighths. Phillies and mares here. Santa Monica's the big favorite. Uh, are you going to try to beat her? No, I'm not. I think uh, I think she deserves to be the favorite off those three races, the, the three races in North America, coming from Great Britain, uh, trained by Chad Brown. Uh, she's just gotten better each race, and she won the dance smartly at Woodbine, uh Last out and comes back to to New York, where she ran well at Belmont, and, and she ran a great race at Keeneland, won by four links in her first North American race. So I think she's a deserving favorite here. Uh, probably not going to single and pick four. I'm going to also use Homeland Security for Chad Brown, simply because it's Chad Brown and I read Ortiz. Uh, ran really well in the River Memories last out and won that race at Belmont. So I think uh, she fits as well. I'm going to stick with two there. I, I liked uh, the eight horse. Uh, Lady Montdor, but uh, watching that race back that she won at Saratoga, she had some heat issues with heat stress. It was 96 degrees at Saratoga today, so I'm not going to play her. I'm, she may scratch if it's that hot up there. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go too deep in the pick four, but Santa Monica is certainly my win pick here. Yeah, I couldn't get past her either. I would uh, trying to find somebody else to go with other than the favorite, but she looks just really strong. Grade two win last time. Uh, Somersault is one I thought that might could – get in the mix you hit the board as a you know for an exacta try super candidate if you're playing those kind of wagers uh, down on the inside got a nice post and uh, i think has run uh, okay at saratoga before but uh, santa monica is my win pick as well pick four uh, i'm gonna end up singling santa monica i think so it'll be a, an inexpensive ticket i'm gonna go five deep on the front end maraud raging bull therapist up the ante and march to the arch i didn't mention that one or or Raging Bull when we talked about it, but I think both of those are uh, worth considering. So that's one, two, three, seven, nine. I'm just going too deep in the spinaway, chasing yesterday and restless rider. Uh, then I'll take uh, four horses in the Woodward, Sunny Ridge, Gunna Vera, Seeking the Soul, and I'm just going to throw in Yoshida on the Billmott factor and then single Santa Monica. So five by two by four by one. So it is a uh, an inexpensive ticket. 
if you want to go deeper in the last leg, try to beat Santa Monica, then uh, you know you could go Sunny Ridge, Gunavera, just maybe use two in the Woodward, something like that. But uh, I'm just going to single Santa Monica and hopefully catch a price a couple of times in the other three. How about you? I'm going to get a little bit uh, heavy in the front and light at the end. So I'm going to take four horses in the first leg. Uh, 1379 up the anti raging bull therapist and Maraud. And I'm going to go five deep in the second leg with 456711. That's Catherine the Great, Nada, Madeline, Sipkin Harbor, Tracing Yesterday, and Restless Rider. Then in the third leg, I'm going to go 689, which is Term of Art, Discreet Lover, and Gunavera the Nine. And then stick with two deep in the, in the last leg. And that would be the five and the six, I believe, if I get my papers straight here. Five and six, Santa Monica is my pick, but I'm also going to use Homeland Security. So that is one, three, seven, nine with four, five, six, seven, eleven with six, eight, nine with five, six for sixty dollars. I'm going to add one more horse to my second leg, Reflect, um, just because that's the price. And that one, if, I, if Santa Monica does win, I want to have a price somewhere, hopefully. So I'm going to do one, two, three, seven, nine. With seven, ten, eleven, with one, nine, ten, twelve, with five. So that'll just uh, increase the cost not that too much. It's a wise investment because if that horse wins, you'll get twenty times what it would have. If exactly, horse that's won. what I'm thinking too. And I kick myself <laughs> if I don't uh, use the other California shipper besides chasing yesterday. So uh, we'll add that one in there as well. Best of luck on the closing day card. Don't forget Kentucky Downs opens up on Saturday. Huge fields and a, a great card there. Uh, Del Mar and Saratoga are wrapping up, but you've got five big days coming up at Kentucky Downs with big full fields and usually some really good prices. So uh, make sure you check out that card. Jim, we should also mention that uh, the Labor Day action will be intriguing because uh, you're wrapping up Saratoga and Del Mar, and there's a pick six angle that uh, our listeners need to meet, need to know about, right? Yeah, just like in Kentucky, at the end of the meet, uh, they have to pay out the uh, pick sixes and pick fives. So especially if there were to be a carryover into Monday, it could be a huge pool because they've got to pay it out even if nobody gets it. So uh, good opportunity to uh, wrap up the Saratoga and Del Mar meets. It's a shame they're already over. It seems like it goes by so quickly. But uh, they are done on uh, Labor Day, and we have a great card on Labor Day. All, all the major tracks are running. For Jim Goodman, I'm Tom Leach. This is the In the Money Podcast for KeenelandSelect.com.